All right, so I'm going to keep uh, these relatively shorter um, and more to the point by only discussing a couple movies at a time. Uh, that way, you know, you can watch the ones you want and, uh, and hopefully get a bit more information. And that way, unlike in previous videos where I had to sum up really quickly, I'll be able to uh, just discuss a bit more in depth why a particular movie is a little bit better. So the first one is a bit of an art house favorite, and it's called Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, and it stars and was written by Eric Bogosian. Uh, now, you'll know him as the bad guy from Under Siege 2, Dark Territory. Uh, among others, he was, he's also uh, a, uh, a main character on uh, one of the Law & Order series. Uh, he's a really top-notch actor, and uh, in Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, he performs a one-man stage play that he performed, uh, obviously, uh, on stage for years before finally getting it made into a film. And if you watch it, it's a wonderful example of how to stage a one-man or one-person show while still uh, keeping the audience's attention and suspending their disbelief because he takes on these wonderful mannerisms that are excellent and really represent a devotion to both the writing, the characters, uh, making them perfectly three-dimensional. And I think that if you watch it, uh, you'll get a lot out of it. A lot of people tend to use the phrase sex, drugs, and rock and roll uh, as if it's synonymous with sin and evil. But uh, this particular movie just uses, a, uses it as the title to sort of say, here's some of the uglier side of life, you know, and here's like just some of the stuff that, you know, our everyday people we have to deal with uh, around us. So, you know, take a real hard look at it and and see what see what's there and see if these people are that different from you you know and I don't know uh, he doesn't actually come out and say these things but it seems to be holding a mirror up to society because we look down on sex drugs and rock and roll just as we would look down on a lot of the characters that he presents uh, such as one is kind of a homeless crazy guy another is this kind of um, you know pardon the phrase uh, you know, a, a very a very ethnic stereotype of, of like a, an Italian uh, type type of person, and uh, you know he he really kind of holds it up and says, you know, these are human beings, you know, so let's actually take a look at what they're like if you were to talk to them. Uh, anyway, so it's it's really fascinating because it shows a wonderful depth of range for him as an actor, and the fact that he wrote it wrote all the dialogue, performed the show on stage for, I'm assuming, years uh, before finally getting the film made, really is something sensational. Uh, and to watch it and see him really, you know, in his top-notch uh, level is something that I would recommend you do. Uh, so, moving on, uh, I filled out enough surveys on Harris Poll Yes, I know. Filling out online surveys in order to get movies. What lows have I sunk to? Uh, in order, and one, I, I, I got enough points that I could get a DVD, and so I just picked Daredevil because uh, I like the character of Daredevil. And as it is, I had seen the movie on television, and I thought it was a pretty good movie. Uh, it was a bit of a flop in the theater, and it produced, and it went off to uh, produce Elektra which then was also a flop uh, in a lot of ways. But at the same time, I think Daredevil uh, is not as popular uh, in terms of the movie and the comic book because it's a much harsher, grittier character. You know, it's not, you know, Spider-Man swinging around in the sunshine and, uh, and everything where you know every 
where the music is very happy and and everything and yes he has his grief to deal with but he has his family by his side Ben Murdoch's character basically has nobody uh, he has one friend and that's about it he he can't hold up a relationship uh, you know and while I appreciate that they put in Electra just to kind of give it uh, an interesting thing and an interesting romance dynamic really the best part of the story uh, is with Bullseye and the Kingpin uh, I think that that whole dynamic is wonderful they could have had the love interest without it being Electra but the fact that it is Electra and that she then goes after him and tries to attack him because she's convinced that uh, he killed her father you'll have to find out how if you haven't seen this movie already um, it's really something and then on top of it he actually uh, has you know these amazing duels with both Bullseye and the Kingpin so the fight scenes are amazing and that's saying something because uh, as you know I'm a big fan of Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee and I thought that the fight scenes for this were well choreographed well laid out in terms of the storyboard and although you could tell what shots were CGI it wasn't it, it didn't remove you from the from the thing you were still in it and so you, and you could still keep track of it because it wasn't too fast uh, so that you know it it didn't work somehow uh, as it is uh, this DVD which is just your widescreen edition two disc set uh, comes with uh, documentaries, featurettes, um, multi-angle scene studies, uh, uh, some music videos on the second disc, and I'm just looking at the first disc, and um, it comes with director and producer commentary and uh, on-screen trivia track, which I played, and uh, the trivia track is actually really fascinating. If you have a chance to check out the Star Trek DVDs that I recommended in another video, uh, I think you'll see that the trivia tracks along the bottom are really interesting uh, stuff that you know fans of the film or fans of uh, any of these types of films will really get a lot out of. And um, in this particular case, Daredevil, um, the trivia track, it it just it, it lends such an interesting depth to parts that maybe some folks might not understand, uh, such as the immersion tank that he sleeps in in order to cancel out all the noise from the outside. So, that being said, uh, check out Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. It came out in 1991 and uh, I think has won several awards. It's definitely an art house favorite. Uh, also check out Daredevil. It's more of a pop culture movie. It's uh, definitely one uh, that's less for the kids, more for the teenagers and the grown-ups. It has some good music, uh, and I think you'll really get a lot out of both of these movies uh, on both, you know, an intellectual level in the one case, and in the case of Daredevil, you'll get to see Jennifer Garner in, like, tight leather, and you'll get to see Ben Affleck you know, strutting his sexy stuff. So that's all for now. Bye-bye.